inshallah, what we are going to do tonight, I'll let you all know what's going on. So the plan is, inshallah, for uh, Brother Ibn Ali to speak to us for a little bit. And he'll speak for about 15, 20, 30 minutes, whatever he feels comfortable with. And then after that, um, I am going to have a back and forth. And then we'll talk about different issues that young people face uh, in America. Specifically, young Muslims, what we are facing. So um, a little bit about uh, Brother Ibn Ali Miller. He's a 26-year-old Muslim man from Atlantic City. He's received widespread praise online, including from NBA star LeBron James. Takbir. Right. After he defused a fistfight that erupted in the middle of the street in Atlantic City and convinced the brawlers to shake hands and walk away, he was honored by the City Council of Atlantic City and made several nationally televised appearances representing Islam in a positive light. More than 28 million people have viewed the video since it was posted on Facebook. And uh, Brother Ibn Ali Miller can be uh, seen urging the youngsters not to bring shame to their hardworking parents. And what's interesting is that every single person, if you haven't already seen that video, you should, because it's really interesting how... Um, you know, one thing which we'll probably talk about tonight is friendship, right? And that's something I would love to touch on because we often don't know who our friends are. And the one thing in that video you can see is Brother Ibn Ali Miller telling these young people that if you're doing something bad or if you're fighting and your friends are just cheering you on for the bad thing you're doing, that most likely they're probably not your friends. But that's a really interesting video to see uh, nonetheless. Um, and he literally refused to leave until the two guys that were fighting shook hands. He's a student of Imam I mean, uh, Muhammad and a member of the Masjid Muhammad of Atlantic City. He's traveled internationally, most recent to Yemen, and is known for his inspiring and spiritual speeches and outcomes focus on uh, workshops. Uh, he's also been on The Ellen Show. He's also been on Steve Harvey. And I think what the young man who said the great Ibn Ali Miller, what he was referring to is because you're from Jersey, so that makes you great, because we're all in Jersey. So that makes all of us great. Alhamdulillah. So... Uh, because you know Jersey gets a lot of uh, gets a lot of uh, you know thrashing these days. When you're in Jersey, we are all great on the basis of New Jersey. Alhamdulillah. So it's good to be here, and um, I'm going to go ahead and ask Brother Ibn Ali to go ahead and take the mic and drop the mic. So. Inshallah. alaikum wa rahmatullah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina wa habibina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We start with praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we say alhamdulillah. We say alhamdulillah because of all of the things that Allah ta'ala has endowed upon us that were not obligatory upon him. So whenever we speak to young people, it's most important that we always make sure that you understand that none of us deserve anything. No one deserves anything. And anything that you do have is that it came from the generosity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I just feel... <clears throat> As we travel around, we meet young people, we meet different communities, we hear the, uh, the, the, the problems that the youth are going to in different communities, and depending on location, depending on um, financial class, depending on all these different things, some of the problems are different, but many of the problems, they stem from the same root, and that root from the youth is feeling deserving. So I got one rule, don't speak while I'm speaking. So if I catch you, alhamdulillah, if you're older than me, then mashallah, I'll just be quiet. I won't say anything. I'll just be quiet while you're talking because I shouldn't be speaking while you're speaking. But if I catch one of you young guys speaking while I'm speaking, you're going to have to share the joke, inshallah. You got me? Okay, inshallah. Young sisters too, if I catch you talking, you know, you got to share the joke, inshallah. So the, the topic of tonight was to keep it real, right? And keeping it real, uh, and this idea of the character of an American Muslim. And for me, I don't like any of these kind of terms. Because, like, what is an American Muslim, dude? Like, what is that? Right? Who are you talking about? Right? Who are you talking about? Right? You're talking about, like, Bengali Americans, Pakistani Americans. You're talking about black Americans or white Americans. Like, what are you talking about? Right? You know? Um, and, I, and, and I get it. When it's presented to me, I know it's meant, but we want to change these wordings some. We want to change these wordings some. Because we're not just American Muslims. We are Muslims. We don't have to put anything on the front of that. We don't have to put anything on the front of that. We don't have to succumb to anything. We don't have to be like anything. We don't have to prove ourselves and prove our religion to anybody or anyone. We don't. We don't. 
And some things that we see, especially in uh, communities who are like affluent communities, so you you know, like when you, you're in America, this guy becomes a doctor, then his brother becomes a doctor, and then boom, 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 and then house here, got a mash in here, and now you got a whole community, you got like 20 doctors, a few lawyers, and you're rolling, right? So, what I find what happens a lot in affluent communities is that the young people, we often get lost. And what happens is, like when we were growing up, we didn't have any money. So what I find, what happens in the affluent communities, uh, when we were growing up, uh, I live in Atlantic City, New Jersey. So when we were growing up, so our background, we, 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 we didn't have much money. But my mom worked a lot you know, to cover us, to make sure that we had the things that we needed, to make sure that we had those things that we needed. So what happens, uh, because our parents, our parents worked extremely hard, and they worked long hours, and they worked a lot. So the amount of time that we actually had to spend with our parents growing up, it really wasn't much, right? So I'm not saying the parents who, grew, who weren't in the house, I mean the parents who were in the household. My mom just worked so much. I would see her in the morning when she's going out, and then sometimes she would cook dinner, and she would put dinner together for two or three days and have like in the freezer and tell, hey, tonight just pop it in the, in the microwave oven and keep it going, you know? Um, so, 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 so what does all this mean? is that my mom, she became a Muslim in the 80s, but she never had a chance to really study her deen. She never had a chance to really learn at a high level her Islam. So she got what she could get. She knows some Quran, she knows how to pray, she knows some of the um, uh, saying, some of the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, basic, 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 basic things, right? Um, Holidays we celebrate, we've celebrated them all, right? And she, she makes them big for us like a mom would. But she didn't get a chance to study the dean at a high level. But she's working in the hospital for 25 years. If you ask her anything about anything about anything, she's going to give you this 12-syllable uh, word that explains some little utensil that's this big, right? Because that's, that's what she spent her time on. Likewise, your parents as well. So in affluent communities, in communities where you have a lot of money, is that parents work a lot. You just do. So everyone wants to be a doctor, you know, and doctors make big buck. Don't get me wrong, they make big money. But dude, they work big time, bro. And they work long hours a lot. Long hours a lot. Accountants and lawyers and teachers, these people work long hours a lot. Professionals are professionals for a reason because they get paid for the job that they do, meaning they're working a lot. Where are the children? Where are the children? Where are the youth when mommy and daddy's at work so much? And I'm not, this is not for me to put this on the parents. I just want to make a point here because in our culture, so I'm a black American, no shame in that. And I'm a black American with all the negative connotations that come with being a black American. I have no shame in that, all right? So in our culture, the, in the last uh, 2018, so 20 years to 2000, and then 30 years to the 70s, and then the 60s, and make it like, uh, what did I just do, 50, 60, 60 years? So about 60 years ago, uh, you got this phenomenon of, of black fathers leaving. A um, little bit before Vietnam, right when the heroin came in to the country, um, but you had this phenomenon of black fathers leaving all over. Right after Woodstock, right after the whole hippie generation had come to and passed, um, there was this phenomenon that began of, of black fathers leaving. So for us, one, a lot of us were, were, were used to having an imbalance, and a lot of us are imbalanced because of that, but used to having the imbalance nonetheless, right? Our mom's working multiple jobs and a lot of jobs and going to college, get a degree, all at the same time. We're used to that. It's not normal. It shouldn't be normal, but it's our normal, right? And, and the point I'm making is because all of you, you have to recognize what is your normal. What is your normal? So that was our normal. Because of our normal, it produced a certain thing in us. Even as kids, when we would go out to play, we had to be a certain way. So if no one's in the house and you're out in the neighborhood playing, you can't get in trouble because you get in trouble, there's no one in the house. So you got to even watch yourself a certain way. So with the communities who are more uh, affluent, there are two things that happen. Depending on what country you're coming from and how many of you are not from America, Everyone's from America? What do you mean, background-wise? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah. we're born and raised here, but we're not 
Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So, okay, I, I, you know what? Let's be more specific. Okay, how many of you are first generation Americans? MashaAllah. Right? How many of you are second generation Americans? Right? MashaAllah. How many of you are third generation Americans? If I get third generation, I'm going back a little too far? A little bit? All right, a little bit for the lineage? All right. Okay. So the point, and we're, hey, listen, dude, I didn't come from here either. You know, I'm like, I don't know what generation we're in, you know, but I don't know, maybe a hundred or something, but, you know, I got a generation two, you know, I don't know which one I'm in, but, you know, we, we got a number two, you know. So the point that I'm making is that for your parents, maybe for you, because you were born here, you were raised here, this is your normal, but I don't care how long your parents have been here, this is not their normal. This is not regular to them. This, it's, just, it's just not regular to them, you know? Even though they're working, they, 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 are, they are good members of society, they're good contributors to society, and honestly, you guys are building America up. But this is still not normal to them. How people live, how the women are able to be a certain way, how, this is not normal to them. Culture-wise, we, we, we have, you guys have the culture conversation a lot. You know, we have the culture, we're, we're Muslims, so amongst Muslims, we have the culture conversation a lot. You know, um, and, we, and we don't have to be shy about any differences in our culture. MashaAllah. May Allah help us with the good in our culture and let us leave the bads in our cultures. I mean, I mean. So the point that I'm making is this. For you, maybe in the old country, maybe there was always someone in the house with the youth. Maybe if it wasn't Baba, maybe it was Mommy. If it wasn't, if it wasn't Umi, then maybe it was Jada, right? Like, like yo, je, like, my, like Grandma was always there, bro. Right? That's kind of just how it goes. Or Grandpa was always there, right? Whoever the oldest person in the family was, they were always in the house, right? So there was always some type of guardian there, some type of authority always in the picture. And I got a lot of friends from Bangladesh, a lot of friends from Pak, a lot of friends from all over. And for them, they say the biggest difference is family culture. Over there, we were all so tight knit. Any day for dinner, it would be 40 of us. Any day for lunch, it would be 30 of us. Any day, you know, I always stayed here, they always stayed there. There was always someone around. The thing here in America is that you haven't come here with your whole families. So alhamdulillah, we come together and we build community, mashallah. But it takes a while to trust community. It's not that easy, right? So maybe you start community from, uh, uh, on, on the basis, of course, first, la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. But after that, though, maybe we're from the same country. Maybe we're in the same background as far as work. Maybe we're in the same background as far as this or that, what we want for our kids in the new country, d depending on whatever it may be, right? But how many of us are just popping up at each other's houses. It's not normal for the elders who are from other countries. They used to, like, you know, today we'll have dinner at Yusuf's house, tomorrow we'll have dinner at Ibrahim's house. That's just how they did it. But now, every day, they don't even go to their friends' houses. They just come home. And the youth, how it used to be, where there will be someone around all the time, and the youth, they have so much time they're spending alone. They have a lot of time that they are spending alone. And what they do when they're alone, in this uh, particular uh, portion, I'm just saying to the elders, it's something to consider that our youth, they are spending a lot of time alone. But they're not really alone because they got these things. Dude, we didn't, yeah, this is craziness. I'm trying to tell yo, bro, this is craziness, bro. How old are you, 27? When you were 13, did they have these? No, I had a Nokia. You had a Nokia? Was it green screen? No, I had the color one. Oh! I, I couldn't afford, I, you know what, I couldn't afford, I had a summer job. I had a green screen, though. You played Snake? You played Snake? I used to play kick, like kickball, I think. That thing was wow, right you had a nice one, bro. It was like the iPhone of the time. There you go. Yeah, we used to play snake, play bricks, that's it. No, mine didn't have games. Okay, how many guys play kickball on your phone? Ha, jokes uh -huh. on you. <laughs> right? As a matter of fact, okay. Okay, all right. All right. How many of you, how many of you were in ninth grade and there were iPhones available? How many of you ever owned a phone that you only had to charge once a week? Ha. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you wouldn't know what to do with that kind yeah, of phone, dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. How many of you had a phone with no Facebook, right? Or no Instagram or no Snap? How many of you had a phone that would just call or just text? Oh, okay. MashaAllah. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. So the point that we're making here is that here in America, things are changing. 
And things are moving very, 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 very fast. And so some of my brothers who come from the Middle East is that our parents, they come here and they don't know all of what's going on because they weren't young people here. And I just feel that, you know, some of the young people, I feel that some of you are taking advantage of your parents and knowing that they don't know completely what's going on. That's how I feel. I could be completely wrong, right? But that's how I feel. Why? Because, you know, how many parents are here? Raise your hand. Okay. All right, mashallah. Wow, you're a parent, dude? Whoa. <laughs> Dude, he led us a lot, correct? Yeah, yeah. He's a baby. Dude, he's a sheesh. How old is your kid? One, two? Like, mashallah. Mashallah. What's his name? Yusuf. Yusuf. Allah bless Yusuf and make him amongst the righteous ones. Amin. Amin, Rabbil Alameen. And make him a great leader and someone who brings Islam to the forefront in America. Amin. Amin. Do the Yusuf, inshallah. So. Wow, man, you got such a baby face, dude. <laughs> MashaAllah. Yeah, man. MashaAllah. So, of those parents who've raised hands, uh, how many of you are in DMs? You're not a parent. You're definitely not a parent, dude. You definitely don't have any kids, dude. That's, oh, what's a DM? Okay, that's a question. That's a question. That's a good question. That is a great question, Mom. MashaAllah. What's a DM? Okay. Oh, they say it goes down in the DM, Mom. That's how they say it, Mom. Mom, they said it goes down in the DM, Mom. I got to tell you. Okay. So, young people. Hey, now that you, you hear them, shh, shh, shh. They can't get it together. And they're sweating. Their palms are sweating. Their armpits are sweating. Their feet are sweating, dude. He's talking about DMs. Erase, 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 right? <laughs> hey, mom, grab their phones now. Yeah, you know? Okay, okay. All right, young people, from a show of hands, how many of you know what the DM is? Come on, come on, come on. Raise your hands, raise your hands, raise your hands. Raise your hands, raise your hands, raise your hands. Raise your hands. Okay, mashallah. Mashallah. Raise your hands, raise your hands. Okay, put your hands down. Put your hands, mashallah. All right, did I just bust you, dude? Okay, <laughs> mashallah. Okay, hey, mom, the DM is direct messaging. That's what the DM is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like me to you, straight. Like, you know, like, nothing. Phew. It even makes that, does it make that sound when you send it? Phew. Not, any, not anymore. See, I don't, I don't even have the new one, mom. I'm not even on the new one, you know? Phew. It makes the sound like, Phew. and then you get the thing, and it goes, beep, beep. And then the guy in the other end, he goes, Dude, my phone. And he grabs it, and then he gets, and then he gets instantly gratified. Subhanallah. And then he gets it. It goes phew, on your phone. It goes beep, beep on his phone. He goes duh, 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 on my phone. And then he gets it. He sees it, and he goes ah, with a sigh of relief. He got his DM, right? So there are two things here. One is that this uh, DM thing is a. Uh, is like one of the, like the number one ways that young people communicate. And it's even, even if you take their phone, you're not gonna find it because you gotta go get the app that they have the DM on. So if you get their phones and you check a text message, no, oh, mom, no one's talking in text messages anymore. No one's talking in text messages anymore. Right, if I got something to say, I don't even wanna, I'm gonna put in the DM, you know? I hear some guys laughing back there. You guys wanna share? How about we look at your DMs? <laughs> Anyone volunteering? To <laughs> Anyone? There's a, check it out. There's a camera there. There's a camera there. Okay, we got to volunteer. So listen, you know they're going to record this, right? And so just take your DM, right? Pull it up. Put it on the camera so that way they'll see it whenever they watch back the recording. And then bring it to us so we can read it. Anyone wants to give up the DMs? No one? Hang on? I'll hang on. Okay. No, yo, I'm not, yo, I'm not trying to cause, yo, I'm telling you, I'm not trying to cause problems. I'm just trying to show you something. I'm just trying to show you something. That's all I'm trying to do here, right? Because today, there is a big disconnect between our elders and our youth. And if there is any problem that the youth are facing, it's the disconnect that we have with our elders. 
Because how could I ever grow to really be a man if I don't pay attention to men? How could I ever grow to really be a true woman if I don't pay attention to true women? But I fear today that many of our youth, and it wasn't like this in the old country. If any of our uncles, you know, if any of you would like to share, we would love to hear how things were when you were 14 and you were 15. We would love to hear it. Any of the uncles who were 14 or 15 or 16 or 17 or 18 in the old country, in the 70s, in the 80s, in the 90s, even the early 2000s, these kids, they just have it like, um, like this, uh, the, the idea with the silver spoon in the mouth. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. And believe it or not, we, see, sometimes we think just get the education. Get A's, go to college, and that's great. You got to get A's and you got to go to college and you have to become a professional. That's like, that's, that, that, that's, that's preschool, bro. That's what you have to do. It's not even a choice. You got to get education, you got to go to college, and you got to become a professional. That's what you have. That's period, bro. Every, period. You got to do that. It's not even a question. I don't care what else you want to do, but you got to do that. Here's the thing. When our parents did it, they didn't get to do it with the luxury like we have. They didn't, just, they didn't get to go to school and just go to school. So amongst the elders who are here, how many of you went to school and worked? One, two, mashallah, mashallah, three, mashallah, mashallah. Young people, how many of you go to school and work? Ah, yeah, parents, you're stepping it up, stepping it up. You got bills? Yeah. What's your bills? Whoa, mashallah. Is the car you drive? No, my mom drives. Mashallah. Whoa, look at that. Phone bills, what else, dude? Uh, it's going to be weird, but like Netflix and Hulu, Eric. No, no, that, that's not. <laughs> no, 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 wait. <laughs> He's Netflixing and chilling. He's, <laughs> that's like eight bucks a month. That doesn't count, yeah? It's like Arabic TV. It doesn't count, bro. It's not, you, it does. Dude, you can, cause you can live without a TV. Even the, I'll give you the car. The car is a real thing. You gotta have a car. Okay, all right, yeah, maybe not, maybe not, maybe not. Any guys watch Urchigal? No, no Urchigal fans in? Okay, I'll leave it alone. I don't love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like addicted to this show, dude. Wait, where, where's Muhammad? Isn't like Muhammad love? Yeah, Urchigal's my show, bro. I don't even watch TV that much, believe it or not. I, man, but me and my wife, I'm like, I'm like stuck. And me and her, we haven't like a same TV show, and like I don't know, we haven't watched the same. Like ten years, we don't we don't watch the same TV shows. But this one we watch together though is is is, is really nice. How the Ottoman Empire came about, mashallah. So someone else, I I seen a hand back there. Who else is paying bills in here? Who else is paying bills in here? He's the only one paying the car payment for mom. He's the only one buying Netflix. Netflix. <laughs> That's great. He said it as a bill, bro. It's like <laughs> I gotta have the Netflix, right? It's, yeah, he's done a lot of chilling. Okay, how many, how many, how many young people have to pay for where you live? Let's be real. We're keeping, we're keeping, we're hashtag keeping it real, right? How many of you young people pay for where you live? How many of you young people pay for the food you eat? Wait, 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 wait! No, no, no! I'm not talking about what the money your parents gave you, bro. <laughs> yeah, how old are you? 12, 11, 13, really? Whoa, okay, okay. What's your name? Uh, Abdullah? Hey, your name's Abdullah. Say it proudly, bro. What's your name? Abdullah. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. Hey, man, yo, man. That, listen, bro, you got, you, dude, you got the name, bro. You got the name, bro, you know? You, dude, you're representing us all, bro. You got the name, bro, you know? All right, Abdullah, all right? So answer every question like that, right? What do you want to be when you grow up? Uh, MashaAllah, you want to be a doctor, huh? MashaAllah, okay. All right, I want to stop, I want to stop buzzing so many jokes in a, in a second. I'm just trying to, you know, yeah. Because sometimes, sometimes I feel like we get together, and whenever we're in the room with our parents, everyone just goes so dry on me, you know? Like, it's like if, I, if, I, if we're in an event and we're by ourselves, you know, everyone's laughing, everyone's joking, everyone's having a good time. But then our elders come, and everyone just goes dry. And I think to myself, you know, like, you know, they want to see you smile, too, you know? So they're happy you're living, they're happy you get good grades. You know, but your parents, they want to see you smile, they want to see you laugh, they want to see you enthused as well, you know? 
Um, so, alhamdulillah. So, parents, so you know, your kids, you know, alhamdulillah, they, 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 they do find a sweetness in the deen, and they do find uh, joy and laughter and talking about these issues in Islam uh, that, that involve us. So, may Allah reward them for that. I mean. So, you know, we're kicking your butts a little bit, but I do want to tell you all that, subhanAllah, this gathering is really amazing. Um, one, two, three, four, it's a ten, ten. So, there's about 60 brothers, you know, 70 brothers, something like that, close to 80. And then the sisters, you got like, you know, almost like 20, 30 sisters. So, uh, uh, this is, you know, this is a pretty, pretty, really nice crowd for a community this size. This is a really, really nice crowd for a community uh, um, uh, this small and this new, um, and that's located in a particular way like this one. But more than that is that this is a really, really nice crowd of young people, mashallah. You know, so may Allah reward your parents, and may Allah reward all of you for having in your heart to want to come here and to want to be here and to want to take part. Amin. Because one of the saddest things that we find in certain communities is that the youth, they don't want to do any engaging. And I just feel when they get to the point where they don't want to do any engaging, it's very, 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 very hard to reach them. But in a community like this, hey, that's a joke? No jokes? Okay, okay, all right. Um, in a community like this, where you see so many young people, as I came in, I was meeting brothers, asking their age, everyone's like 14, 15, 13 over here, uh, Abdullah. Uh, 14, 15, 13, 18, 19, all between those ages. And so to see the community be full of young people, this is actually a crowd of young people with just a few elders. And alhamdulillah, this is very, very, very refreshing to see. So uh, you guys support YM, support YC, uh, support Sakina, inshallah, um, alhamdulillah, uh, because these type of events, they need to happen. They need to happen. We have to have them, inshallah. Because we have to create spaces where young people can be okay to talk about the, the issues in a real way and in a non-judgmental way. But at the same time, in a way where you'll accept accountability as well, inshallah. So, uh, Abdullah, right? So, you buy your own food, you know? Mashallah. Where do you get the money from? I make it. Oh, you make it. Whoa, mashallah, he's making money at 13, he's going to be a doctor? <laughs> I, hey, man, that's, yeah, that's nice, man. Someone's going to put you on their radar, dude. All right, okay. All right, you're 13, you're going to be a doctor, you're making money. Where do you make your money? Are you making or counterfeiting it? So, I don't know. Wait, he's smart, though, so I don't know if, what does making mean? You're earning or you're, like, pro you're producing the money? Oh. Okay, yeah, yeah, he's an earner. He's a worker, he works for his money. Okay. So he's a real man. You work for your money. MashaAllah. All right. Does your father work? Oh, yeah. He works really hard? Yeah. You want to be a hard worker like him? Oh, yeah. Takbir. Oh. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillah. May Allah make you a hard worker like your father. I mean. Okay. So what do you do for work? Abdullah? I do other people's homework. This is great. What is it? This is fantastic, oh, dude. Wow. Whoa. All right. Hey, listen, I'm not, you're, you are an entrepreneur, bro. You're going to go, you're going to go far in that business. <laughs> He's going to go. Mom, he said he does other people's homework. <laughs> this is great. Dude, I needed you in ninth grade. Where were you? Where were you, bro? Where were you, bro? I needed you, man. Where were you, bro? I dropped out of college because of you, bro. I didn't have anyone to pay, you know? It's, Whoa. Okay. So is there anyone here who you do homework for? Don't answer that. Don't answer that. Don't answer. <laughs> Your friends are sweating, bro. They're sweating, bro. You know, they're racing DMs already. Now they're thinking, oh, my God, he's going to call my teacher. You know, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing that. Let me ask you this. Do you give them some incorrect answers on purpose? No. All correct? Um, some are like, I do like two of not too suspicious? MashaAllah. Okay. All right. Um, so, how much, so how much do you get paid an assignment? Your prices are great. <laughs> he charges a dollar. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. okay. Alhamdulillah. Okay. So you're charging a dollar. So how many assignments a week are you hitting up? 20, 30, 100? 1,000? 25, whoa! How much money is that a year? Yes, you're gonna be a doctor. Do the math quickly. Let's go. Let's go. Four weeks in a month. Whoa! You have a goal with this. He listen. He has objective. He has objective. He has a business plan. 
He has customers, right? He has <laughs> is it ethical? Uh, we'll get to that conversation, dude. Yeah, you, know, you know the thing about being Mukalif or being an accountable person is that, you know, the pen is lifted from three. So if he's not, if he hasn't reached the age of puberty yet, then, you know, if he did commit a sin, it wouldn't even count for him. So, you know, so I'm not even going to get into that conversation, right? We just, we just want to show all of us, you know, where we are, you know? Uh, uh, the goal for me, right, is for the parents who are here, right, to see your kids more in the real light, right? You know, because the thing about, so I'm different from you guys in many ways, right? Yes, mom? Okay. So I'm different from you guys in many ways, right? So we don't have many doctors in my family, right? We don't even have any. I was like the first guy to go to college in my family. So we don't, we don't come from a, a quote-unquote educated family. We're like hard-working, blue-collar people, right? So, uh, and in my youth, we didn't care so much about school either. We did school, but we were like, you know, wanting to be damn, wanting to be hip, like Jay-Z, kind of like that, right? So that, I would be like, Minister Tanda Rajin. So, yo, Abdullah, yo, dude, may Allah forgive me, may Allah forgive you, bro. I mean, right? Um, but the one thing uh, where, you know, where we identify with the youth is that we are Americans. We are Americans. We're in pop culture, we're in the media, we're in hip hop culture. All the things that the young people, I don't care where they are from, where they love, when they enjoy in those American pastimes, we all become like a melting pot. We all become like a melting pot. And so, no, I don't know what it's like for a young Bengali kid when he goes back home, you know, in the, in the, in the pot with the rice and the potatoes are cooking, like in the spice. I don't know about that, right? But he doesn't know what it's like to come home and my mom's frying pot, fried chicken. She goes, ah, oh! you know, because the grease popped. But we just walk past when she says it because I know the grease popped, you know. But maybe if you walk past, you go, what's going on with Umi, you know. So the thing that brings us all together is what happens, what we're doing with our free time after school, on the weekends, on the internet, on our phones, on our DMs. This is when all of us are connecting. This is when all of us are getting out of the bubbles that we've been placed in, when we start connecting in our free time, when we're being quote unquote Americans, right? When the young guys listen to the music, that their parents are like, what is this nonsense? They just bang, 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 and then they go, ah, you know? And then your kids, they close their eyes and they go, yes, you know? Like, this is it, you know? It's just, it's just not that good, though, you know what I'm saying? It, it, this music is really not that good, though. Not even because your parents don't understand it. I'm just saying, this stuff is garbage, bro. You know, like, some of this stuff is just not good. I don't get it, because we, like, we used to have, like, good music. This stuff is, like, garbage, you know? Um, inshallah. Okay. He said I had to stop talking soon, so I'm going to stop talking soon, inshallah. Right? So, Abdullah, let's finish this up, right? Get some clarity here, because you're a hustler. That's what they call them. You know, like where I live, they say you're a hustler, bro. Right? But you, you know, you better, be, <laughs> you better. <laughs> and th at this age in the game, watch the principal. You know, and, and, you know, you can keep it up. You better watch the police, bro. Well, that's another conversation. We'll have a family meeting after this, Abdullah. All right. So here's the thing, right? So the question was, do you buy your own food? And you say, yeah, when you go out, right? And so when you go out, you're making about. I don't know, 25 bucks a week, that's your salary, right? Like around that, that's your wage, dollar, dollar an assignment, right? Maybe you get one or two rounds, it's not suspicious, right? Cool. So when you go out to eat and you buy your own food, what do you buy? Uh, when, I'm, when, I, when I'm hungry, I like to get frozen yogurt. Frozen yogurt? Okay, alhamdulillah. So how much is the frozen yogurt? Six dollars, so you're down to 19. All right, that's your frozen yogurt. Was that for lunch or breakfast or just a snack? Just a snack? All right. What else do you buy for food? Okay. For what kind of food? Fresh All you guys pay that 12 bucks or just him? 10 bucks? All right. 10, 16. Is that lunch, dinner? What is that? It's a dinner? Oh, you get a dinner out of 25 bucks. You're smart. You're smart. Okay. So now that's 6 plus 10. That's 16. All right? So what, do you, so, so what are you going to do with the other 9 bucks? Ah, this guy's great. <laughs> this kid's great. You even have a savings plan with 25 bucks a week? Okay, adults, right? How many of you have a savings plan in general? Because I'm having a hard time. <laughs> I'm not gonna, I, can't save, I can't save any money, dude. And I make much more money than you do, right? So from a show of hands, adults, how many of you have a savings plan? Right? After that, how many of you could... Whoa, Yusuf's dad has a savings plan. Dude, you are young. 
because Yusuf doesn't have an iPhone yet or those sneakers that cost 300 bucks or that sweater that cost whatever it cost and that koofy he wanted from Sugar that was like 40 bucks and then the, <laughs> the shawl that was 50 bucks, yeah, right? But it's coming though. Your savings are going to get you know, wiped out by the iPad, inshallah, right? So <laughs> that's, yeah, that's what happened to your parents' savings. Yeah. And then they, then they, then they got to pay for college, dude. You, got, you guys are going to make people go crazy. So out of 25 bucks, right, Abdullah, he buys a yogurt for six bucks. That's a bad buy. That's too much money for a yogurt, dude. Absolutely too much money for a yogurt. Don't buy that yogurt anymore. I don't care how great it tastes. <laughs> right? And then he gets a dinner for 10 bucks, right? That's a dinner. So he, he actually ate a real meal out of the deal, right? And then he saves nine bucks. And that's for a whole week. So in seven days, you usually eat seven dinners, seven breakfasts, seven lunch, a million snacks in seven days, right? So out of 25 bucks, you fed yourself one snack out of a million. You fed yourself one dinner, right? One dinner out of seven at least, right? And then you got nine bucks left, and you only got enough left for yogurt. Can't really live off that. And you can't even afford another dinner, right? So Abdullah, you don't buy your own food. MashaAllah. Do you eat dinner every day? MashaAllah. think about that one. Breakfast as well? Oh, yeah. yeah oh, yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah. All right, what do, you, what do you have for dinner, Abdullah? Uh, Dallas, Dallas. Whoa. <laughs> He's talking my language now. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm coming to your house, MashaAllah. Right? So here's <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it has like the beans and the. Yeah, I love it, dude. Yeah, man. You travel enough, you start eating different, and you say, you know what, I like that? I don't like that much, but I, like, I love that, you know? Yeah. So I'm down with that, right? So, okay. And do, do you cook this food? No, Really? Oh, yeah. Did you, oh, yeah. So, <laughs> okay. So, hey, check it out. You're, how many times a week does your mom cook? Uh, every day. Every day? How many times a day? Subhanallah. Takbir. 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 May Allah be with all of our mothers who have fed us day by 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 day for all of these years. Amen. So just quickly, we're going to stop now and we're going to get into a point where we can engage. I was all over the place a little bit because sometimes if I'm having a good time, I lose track of time. So I'm forgetting that there's a whole program here and we have to keep with the tarti, with the scheduling. Um, but the thing is that elders and youth, I'm begging you guys, please connect. So the same way that we had an event, uh, you guys bring Ibn Ali and everyone's here and you guys listen to me, we're talking, we're engaging, we're having a good time. I need you guys as a community to put the elders on one side of the room, to put the youth on one side of the room and lock the door. You know, I don't care if you guys want to play kickball between each other, I don't care if you want to talk and have a yelling, I don't care what it is, right? But the elders and the youth of each community, we have to start coming together as elders and as youth. And we need the elders to interrogate them. And when I say interrogate, I don't mean, you know, the fifth degree and hit them, hit them with the chain and get the question wrong. I'm not, I'm not saying like that, right? But I mean, you guys on this side, these guys on this side, ask these guys, what are you guys doing? You know, when, when everyone's there, because Yusuf can say one thing to his mom, and then Ibrahim says one thing to his mom, Abdullah says one thing to his mom, and then when the moms talk, they're all confused. You know? Like, yeah, 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 we're going to just, yeah, 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 we're going to just, yeah. Hey, did Abdullah say? No, Yusuf said, and then they're all, so hey, moms, you know, dads, bring these guys together and make them talk to each other in front of you and make them talk to you. Please. Because there's a disconnect here, and the thing is, is that some of these young kids, I just want to say quickly, and I'm going to stop, but I just have to say, a lot of our youth are facing an identity crisis. A lot of them. A lot of the young men, and especially our young women, a lot of them are facing identity crisis with this word American. This word, being American, is sending our youth into a realm of confusion. Because what does that mean to be an American? Honestly. Because for us, I've never lived anywhere else. And for us to come to Islam, we had to leave our American ways. 
for Islam to work for black people, to work for poor people, to work for people in the hood as well as it does. The way it worked for us is because we had to leave some of the American norms. And I just feel that a lot of these guys, a lot of these women, young men and young women who are coming from the East, they are targeted and they are targeted on purpose. Because the mass media, they know these guys don't even know what's coming. They don't even have a clue what's going to hit them. Their parents don't know what's going to hit them. Their grandparents don't know what's going to hit them. And we're going to get them. And we're going to get them in the DM. We're going to get them in the Facebook. We're going to get them in the Instagram. We're going to get them in the, the one that you, 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 you Snapchat. Snapchat that deletes in 20. Mom, did you know they have a, a thing now, your son or your daughter? They can take a picture with their friends like crazily. And in the morning, it will just delete on its own. How many parents knew that existed? One, two, three. Oh, you guys are hip. Mashallah. You're not so far behind. Dad, how many dads knew? You said you don't count, bro. Your son didn't count. You got a Snapchat. Right? Okay. How many young people have Snapchat? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the point that I'm making here is that, listen, guys, we got to get to know each other. We absolutely have to get to know each other. Because here's the thing. If you guys go too far to the left, away from the tradition of your parents, you're going to be lost as adults. I got to tell you. Young men, if you try too hard to be different from your father, you're going to create confusion for yourselves, and you're going to be lost when you become a father. Young women, I have to tell you, if you try too hard to be different from your mother, you will have confusion when you become a mother. Hence, your children will be confused as well. So I'm telling you, please, go to your parents, go to your elders for the wisdom that you are seeking. For the wisdom that you need, go to your elders because they have it for you. And on the flip side, elders, use the youth for what they have. And the youth, what they have is energy. So our elders, they have wisdom. So even if you're the young guy who's mature or some of the, like, the young students, they're really responsible and they're handled in their, you know, a certain way, uh, they don't have wisdom yet because the way a person gains wisdom is to live. So some things can only be learned by experience. So you know how you got some of you young smart guys who can do like an algorithm <laughs> that goes from like that side of the room all the way to the other side of the room? I just watch these guys with all this stuff, you know. How many guys are real good at algorithms? Just one? Dude, I'm going to be doctors, dude. You're not good at algorithms. You're not good at algorithms? You better just step your game up, bro. You know? Right? Even a guy like that, you don't have wisdom. You're just smart. Our elders is that they've lived a life. And because they have lived a life is that now they have wisdom. But the same reason they have wisdom is the same reason they don't have energy. So they have wisdom because they lived their life. But man, subhanAllah, some of our elders are tired, bro. They're tired of doing all the work. They're tired of doing all the work. And you young guys with all this energy, you got so much energy because you don't have any wisdom because you haven't lived yet. Yeah, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 28, whatever, you haven't lived yet. Scratching the surface. But what we have to do, and for me, the Islamic community is what's most important to me, especially in America. This is what's most important to me. Because I got kids. I have children. And my children are going to live in a world that we produce together. And they have to go produce something in the world themselves, just like you guys. And I'll be honest with you, as a parent and as a friend and as a brother and as a big brother, as a mentor, I'm scared for you guys. So I'm begging the community as a whole, find a way to take the wisdom from the elders and connect it with the energy of the youth so you can catapult your community into the future. Please, find a way. And some things about your community I would never know and I would never understand, but you do. So please, this is for the elders and it's for the young people. Someone pop it off. Someone spearheaded. How can we get the wisdom from the elders and get the energy from the youth to catapult our communities? How can we do that, inshallah? Um, and alhamdulillah, jazakallah khair. 
Uh, may Allah Ta'ala bless all of you. Thank you for having me. Anything that I said uh, incorrect, I pray that Allah Ta'ala forgives me and I pray, I pray that you forgive me as well, especially if I say anything that has offended you or offended any of the women and offended any of the men or any of your cultures or elder people or young people. And anything uh, that we say here today that was a benefit, it came from Allah Ta'ala. And for you to know that anything good that you have in your life in general at all, whatever it may be, that it came from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So don't give anything else the credit for God. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. The vision of Sakina Institute is to organically empower and grow a dynamic Muslim community and to create an environment that is conducive to the spiritual, mental, and physical well-being for all. So one of the goals of tonight is to collaborate with young people and get a sense of how we can support them and empower them and achieve their goals. For suggestions and programs that they'd like to see, check the website sakinainstitute.org and follow us on social media, Sakina Institute, for news and upcoming events. And if you'd like to donate, please see the front desk. And we accept PayPal and Venmo. So inshallah, without any further ado, let's get further ado, let's get into the discussion. Assalamu alaikum, how are you doing? Wa alaikum salam How are you? I'm doing all right. Mashallah, you have a nice suit, bro. I even like your socks. Thank you. This Mashallah. matches. I did that on purpose. Yeah. Allah. There you go. So um, there are a lot of cool things we spoke about, and I actually was making a list of them like while we were while you were talking, and I realized that a lot of these subjects are so so impacting. We spoke about nationalism, hard work, friendship, drugs, culture, community, parents, social media, role models, media responsibility, music, and money. So That's a lot of like stuff to unpack, but there's one thing that I want to talk about, or I want to ask you about. So we spoke about elders, and we spoke about trusting our elders. They right? want to they want to hear about music and money. We'll get there. Oh, okay, don't worry. I got you. Okay, right? We will get look, there. I'm on your guy's side. He wants to talk about elders. All right. Okay. Elders. All right. Elders. So the last program we had here actually last month was with the Khalil Center, and they um, basically link between tasawwuf and uh, psychology, basically psychotherapy. So it's actually started by a man by the name of Dr. Human Keshavarzi, if you're familiar with them. But they basically um, have uh, therapists that have studied Islam as well as how they've studied psychotherapy and they try to combine and give solutions on that regard. The Muslim community specifically, um, I'll just talk about it from the perspective of, uh, generally speaking, I guess from, uh, I guess this is, a, we'll, t we'll touch on this in a second as well about nationalism. But the one thing I'm trying to talk about is learning to trust community because there's a lot of distrust in community and there's reason for that, right? And I'll kind of play devil's advocate for a little bit. But let's talk about trusting community, right? Because a lot of people have distrust of the community, either because knowing that in, within community people talk, within community uh, people are unable to really form relationships, within community abuse happens of any, so many forms which leads to people not wanting to trust the community. So when it comes to taking advice from elders, do you think that it makes more sense to kind of approach whatever advice elders give and take it full forth with all of the wisdom attached to it, or to be constructive with it and take as we go? Dude, that is a loaded question, bro. Welcome to Jersey. Oh my goodness. Welcome man. to Paramus. Sheesh, that was like such a loaded question, bro. Right? I mean, okay, so about community first. Sure. So, the thing with community is this, right? So, man, you know how like, you know how like, uh, like sometimes like the, there are certain words in Arabic that can't be translated into English? It's just like some words, they just don't have an English word for it. So then they'll give the words, give it the aforementioned meaning, like that. Taqwa. Perfect example, right? So, and I'm not a linguist, so I'm not even gonna try to get into, I'm still in like Aleph Batab, bro, I'm like, like, yeah, it's pretty embarrassing. Pretty embarrassing, mashallah. My kids, they f do, when they record, they just fly past me. You know? I'm still like stuttering and mashallah. Um, so the thing about community is that, so are we talking about community or are we talking about ummah? Let's talk about community. Because and community, community meaning, so we'll define community. And the, community meaning, community these meaning, that we pray with every day. Yeah, the, that we come your with everyday with people. With, or, your everyday people. So if it's your everyday people, the ones you see every Friday, the ones you've been seeing for 15, 20 years. Every Friday, though. Well, however you want to see it. People, for example, in, in up here, right, you'll have people in Bergen County who are from many different towns, but it's still considered, I think, one community, right? Like somebody who lives in Paramus or Bergenfield is not going to be apart from a community of somebody, let's say, living in Patterson. Yeah, like, you, you know, you're, you're, you are living in different areas, but you're still part of the same, like, stuff. Okay, so the thing is this, is that, so there's a difference between, like, a community and a congregation. 
as between a community and a jamaah, right? And I and and so the thing is with a community is that um, common unity. So it's common. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right? And because of what we have in common, we we are, we are unified because of that. The problem that we have in community today is that all of us were not in the community. The common thing that makes us unify is not always la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And whenever that's not the common thing to make us unify, somewhere in there you're going to have some problems, period. So, if, and here's, here's the thing about intention, right? Is that you can tell me whatever you want, I can tell you whatever I want, but surely Allah knows what's hidden in the breast, right? So the thing is that, you know, if, if you did make your community and it was based on money, right? Or, or, or financial statuses or education, uh, like degree statuses and all that kind of stuff, then you're going to have some type of problem based on what you built your unity on, yeah. right? So, so the main thing in community is that be sure, be sure of what the common thing is that you're unifying on. Because apparently everyone can just say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Yeah, 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 that's why we're together. Yeah, 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 that's why we're together. But there are some people who have a complete different belief system than all of us have, and they say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah too. We don't unify with them. We don't unify with them. Those people who say, don't do mole. Those people who say all these different things. We don't unify with them. So the thing is that La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the ideal world, in the ideal world, that's all that it would be. So in the past, with the past Muslims, when they would make a community, they would make a community that would that that the main thing that we do here is La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And to go ahead. So that's under that. So that's a actually. You go ahead and complete your thought, and I'll complete mine. Inshallah. Thought. So, uh, so, so the thing is that I just feel today that many of the communities, the reasoning for building the community and the way that the communities are built, a lot of times they aren't built on very, very, very strong foundations. Yeah, I completely very, agree with that. A lot of times the foundation is not concrete, especially if it was a community that derived from another community. It was a community that left another community or, or, you know, we're here and we got here first. And we're trying to set it up so that way the, the ones who, there's a lot of different things that go on to making a foundation of a community work, you know. Um, but what I will say is that in your community, everyone, please be completely truthful with each other at all times. I'm telling you, truthfulness will bring honor to your community. You know, so the, prophet, in what sense? so the prophet started telling me, he said, tell the truth even if it's bitter. Right. Right? So you got to tell the truth even if it's bitter. So sometimes what we do is that, you know what, I should tell Abdullah, you know, to absolutely stop doing people's homework. Right? I should tell him that. Right? He's my brother in Islam. It's going to get you in big trouble. Stop doing that. Right? I should tell him that. But what we do is say, you know what, I don't want to hurt Abdullah's feelings. You know, it was really funny when we said it in the event. You know, ah, I'm not going to say anything to Abdullah. But no, that's how he made the community better. Because for sure, if he gets busted by the principal, it's going to make us all look bad. If he gets busted, dude, if he gets busted, if a kid from the community gets busted, they're going to look at all the kids from the community. So the thing is, let's tell them the truth now before they tell them the truth. So if you see a young sister and she's going a little bit too far to the left, it's up to the young sisters. Go get your sister, go tell her the truth, you know? But on the flip side, I think you were asking about the parents or the, or the elders, and, and should we accept, you know, all of their advice, how it comes? Let, let, me, let me specify it. Okay. What advice do you have for young people that feel abused or used or hurt by their elders and the community? Get over it. Get over it. I'm like, I, so here's the thing, guys, right? I did, like... I don't, I don't feel bad for anyone. I don't feel bad for anyone. So, you know, with Ibn Ali, you know, if you, you know, your dad was a little hard on you, you know, I don't care, lucky you. You know, that some of us, we never had a father. We never had a father. My father got killed when I was one, and this is my best friend, Ali Adin, and he lost his father as a baby boy as well. We didn't have fathers. We both were raised as orphans by our mothers. So, you got a dad who's hard on you, you got a dad who yells sometimes, dude, I don't care. I'm not the guy that's gonna give you pity for that, I don't care. Young women, you know, your, your mom, you know, you feel like, you know, your mom doesn't hear you out or you know, no one understands you and all that. And I'm not saying that maybe someone shouldn't be more, you know, soft with this issue, but I got to be honest with you. I, I'm not the guy for that. I don't care about that. You know, you, if, if, you know, suck it up, you know. And the thing is that one day when you become parents, trust me, you will understand. And there's a lot of things I disagree with my mother about, but subhanAllah, you know, my kids are getting big and I say, oh, ha ha. Haha. Ha. Notice only the parents laughed. <laughs> Notice that. Right? So the thing is that, but here's the thing. I got it. I'm telling you guys, bro. The real key here, right, 
is to have this complete ultimate respect for your elders. It's like their, it's like their, like their soft spot, their cookie spot, bro. I'm, yo, bro, it works like, you know like the Pillsbury Doughboy? When you go like, and then they, you know, and then they laugh, they go, hoo hoo, you know like that? <laughs> I'm serious, bro, I'm not joking. So your parents respect is like hitting the Pillsbury Doughboy. You know, like, parents, am I lying? You know, like, all the, I'm telling you, what your mother really wants from you is your respect, dude. She wants you to have appreciation for all that she does for you. Not what she's doing for you now. Okay, you don't need to, okay, you don't need to, uh, you don't need her to pick your socks out now. But keep it real, dude. How long did your mom get out your clothes? Keep it real. I'm not going to ask the question because I don't even want to be embarrassed, right? But keep it real, though, right? How long did your mom spend brushing your hair before you go out? Keep it real, bro. How many times did your mom say, wait, wait, come here. Let me, let me fix you up. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Smell you with the cologne. How many times? Feed you. Feed all your friends. Let you make a mess. Clean the mess. How many times? How many times? Even before that. How many times? You get a boo-boo. You get this, you get that. You get this, you get that. And they come for you. How many times? Even before that. You're pooping and peeing in a diaper, bro. How many of you? Hey, where's Abu Yusuf? You're changing diapers, bro. It's serious business, bro. Hey, let me ask you a question. Do you love Yusuf? Yes. Of course, mashallah. Do you love changing his diapers? <laughs> uh, mashallah. So many times, bro. Do you know how many, do you know how many diapers happens for a human being between the ages of like zero and like three, bro? <laughs> Mom, answer the question. How many diapers for a kid for three years? A lot. SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah, bro. I'm telling you, little sis, I'm telling you. How many times? During this whole time, you don't need anything from anywhere. You don't need anything from anywhere and you eat from our breasts. How many times? And you have the nerve to feel some kind of way about advice they're giving you? Cut the crap. Seriously. Seriously. Cut the crap. Don't let being an American change the good you have in your cultures. And the good that you have in your cultures is that you listen to your parents. This was never an issue before we got to America. This was not an issue. It wasn't an issue. In the old country, it was not an issue. So for me, it's not an issue now. Keep it real. That's what we're talking about. Keep it real. Right? So Sheikh Yahya, he says, and this is I'm going to end the question here, is that Sheikh Yahya, he says that to keep it real, with the meaning of keeping it real, is to let your roh dominate over your nafs. So to let your soul, to let this high part of you dominate over this low part of your lower self, over your animalistic ways. Let that dominate. And in reality, when your parents say something, you want to say something back, that's just your nafs, bro. It's just your nafs, bro. It's just your nafs. And alhamdulillah, I heard the word tasawwuf. So uh, for those of us uh, who travel the spiritual path, subhanAllah, the entire spiritual path is about conquering the nafs. Conquer the nafs. Conquer the lower self. Go against what you want, especially that of which is bad for you. And here's the thing. One second, I'm sorry. Here's the thing. I'm not the guy who's going to say, hey, don't listen to any music. I'm not that guy. I'm not the guy that's going to, I'm not the guy who, who, who doesn't understand that young people are going to be young people. Right? I'm not the guy who thinks young people are going to make mistakes. I'm not, the, I'm that, that's not my thing. But I'm absolutely not the guy who will ever give respect to someone who didn't respect the people that they came from. And so if your parents give you advice, it's like learning knowledge, right? So students who, students who study Islam, right? This is the concept, right? Because I remember like in public school, we used to say, I'm not even going to use all this stuff. Why do I gotta learn geometry? I'm never going to use geometry, dude. Right? And then like we got like calculus and it was like, what is this? What's the point? And then with the calculator, we had to learn like all these little like secret like it's crazy. The TI-84. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what's up, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what's up, bro. We got sick with the calculator game, bro. Right? So. All of you guys who are sick on the calculator, raise your hands. You guys, there's more than the guys you want to show. It's, it's, yeah, you too, mashallah. Right? 
So uh, the thing is, is that, okay, maybe you're not gonna use it all every day. But the reason why we learn, so okay, you're gonna learn a bunch of Islamic rules, you're gonna learn a bunch of hadith, you're gonna learn, you're gonna learn all these things in Aqidah, you're gonna learn, you know, all these things from the Bayalawi way, mashallah, right? All these different things, right? And each day you live, because most of us live a life where there's much repetition. So maybe we'll change what we eat, but we don't change our jobs every day. Right? Maybe we change our clothes every day, but we don't change our car every day. Right? Maybe, you know, we'll, uh, 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 the, how much gas we have in the car changes, but we don't change the way we go to work. Job the same way, get the same coffee, same donut. Right? So most of our lives is much of repetition, repetition. But then something always comes up. Something happens. Something happens. We're like, whoa. And it even happens to our elders. Right? For some of you guys who don't have mercy on the elders, they're still learning every day new things as well. They're still finding out new things as well. In some ways, they still feel young as well. So to you, oh, it's my mom, she's so old. It's my dad, she's so old. Dude, 50's not old. To you, because you're just 15. But dude, 50's not old. They're just getting started. You're going to see. You know, like, they're, like that 50's like brand new, bro. They're, they're rock and roll. They're ready to go now. You know, they're, they're, their brain's caught up with their heart. And they're, <laughs> they're ready to go now, you know? 50s not, dude. Maybe they want to play basketball, but they want to do their basketball, though, you know? And so, and so, and so the thing is, this is that, so we, we, so we learn knowledge not because we're going to use it all at one time. We learn knowledge so that way we have what we need when we need it. So we don't learn geometry because we're going to use, you know, we're going to, we're going to build something like this. We've got to get the squares. We're, gonna, we're not going to do this every day, but we learn it so that way we'll have it when we need it. So with your parents and with the elders in general, because I don't want to spend too much time on this in general, because yeah. sometimes it, it gets me really like... Actually, I, I want to piggyback off okay, something you said. Okay, inshallah, inshallah. So, I really want it, one second, yeah, just so, so we get this clear. With your parents, please, just take what they're saying, use what you got to use at the moment, whatever you don't have to use, you put it, you store it away in your, you know, in your little box, and it's, I promise it's going to come a time you're going to need it. There's absolutely going to come a time when you are going to need whatever it is that she was yelling about. Whatever it is that made your father go, hmm. you know, like sometimes, dude, when your dad gets mad. I like friends, their dad gets mad, and he just won't look, he just look at him and go, hmm. and look away, and he's like, he'll act like he's not even see him, you know? But, my, but dude, 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 that's rough though when your dad does that. It's like, man, he's mad at me, man. You know, he's gonna have that talk with you. Well, you're not even gonna talk, you're just gonna listen, but he's gonna have that talk with you, you know? And so my thing is, when he's having that talk, just listen and listen well and take heed and store it away in a particular way that you can go get it. Don't just put it away in a jumbo box. No, say, okay, we were talking about the opposite sex. I'm going to put this in this box. So whenever, whenever you know, the, this issue of the opposite sex arises, I go to my opposite sex box in my brain. I say, okay, my mom said this. My dad said this. My big brother said this. You know, boom, 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 boom. This is what I have to do to make a good decision. You don't want to hear it because, Mom, we're not even doing that. Mom, we're just talking on the phone. No, 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 no. You need to listen to your parents so you don't make a mistake. And the only reason why we use this issue of the opposite sex is because with young people, this is the greatest that I feel, especially in America, the greatest thing that we're faced with. And I feel like everything else in that pales to comparison. So we use this issue because I know it's an issue in everyone's houses, especially if you're in high school, you're 16, you're 17, you're 18, especially. So I'm telling you guys, listen to your parents before you make a mistake. Please listen to your parents before you make a mistake. Inshallah. So there's something else that I wanted to mention, right? The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us that Malam yuwakkar kabirana wa yarham sagirana falaysa minna that whosoever does not respect their elders and tawqeer is a form of respect that you provide to your elders which elevates them. It gives them a sense of reverence. But see, the, the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu has always been about duality. He never thought about things in a linear manner. He never, it, was, it wasn't like, number one, do this. Number two, don't do that, right? So that aspect is that the Prophet of Allah taught us, taught us that if our respects are, are, our elders are given respect, and on the other end, the young people in our community, وَيَرْحَمْ صَغِيرَنَا that they have mercy on those who are younger, then that is what the community is. فَلَيْسَ minna, And the Prophet is saying that they're not of us, meaning that they're devoid from the prophetic community. And the second thing, which, you know, something that you mentioned. Um, Real quick, yeah. before you get the second thing, did you just hear that? How many of you are Muslims? Raise your hands, keep your hands high. 
if you're a Muslim, right? You're a Muslim, right? And keep your hand up if you love the Prophet Sallallahu Like really, you know, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You love him, you love his family, you like him, SubhanAllah, right? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if you don't have respect for your elders, you are not from amongst us. This one that we love, this one that we follow, this one that we take all of our guidance from, this one who has come and given us light. He said that you are not with him. You are not with him. Forget everyone else. Forget me. For, forget everyone else. But you are not with the prophet when you do that. And likewise, for the parents, if you don't have mercy on the children, then you are not with the prophet. You are not with the prophet if you do not have mercy on your children. And true mercy is understanding. Even if that means that you understand that you don't understand. MashaAllah. That's a great understanding. But true mercy is understanding, inshallah. Yeah, the second thing I was talking about, you know, Brother Ali mentioned, or Brother Ali mentioned that he lost his father when he was young. Alhamdulillah, my father is still alive. A lot of you know my father. But what you guys don't know about my dad is that my dad comes from dirt poverty. Like, my dad tells me stories about him as a child remembering that his sandals ripped and he didn't have money to buy, like, slippers. Right? Are, you, That's, are, you, are you still poor? I mean, I don't think we're poor, but we're not rich. Yeah, but we're, we're doing good. He worked hard. He worked hard, and he I'll tell you. Hard. And I'll tell you something. Have right? you ever had sandals that ripped? Have I what? Have you ever had sandals that ripped? I got socks that ripped. Mashallah. There you go. Right. But I'll tell you this, right? A lot of young people they think they got it bad, right? But then, see, what everybody growing up as a young person thinks, I was like, oh, my dad yelled at me, oh, my mom yelled at me, it's like the worst thing in the world. But when you get older, you come to a certain point in life where it's like, man, it's like your parents, and by the way, that poverty led to something else. My father lost his father when he was 11 years old, and he lost his mother when he was about 14 years old. Right? I never met them, but you gotta think about this. Your parents may not tell you everything they've been through in life. They're not gonna be an open book to you because when they feel that if they have- Because you're not their friend. You are a child. Stay in a child's place. You are not their friend. They don't owe you any explanation for anything. There you go, right? And that can come from a place of love or it can come from a place of being an authoritarian parent for the sake of raising you, right? When you get older, it'll come to a point where it's like, man, like it hit me one day. It's like my, 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 my mother lost her mother when she was nine, right? So my parents came to this country with nothing, with their parents having passed and were able to have four good kids who are not in jail, not dead, not doing drugs, and they're doing all right, right? But for a lot of us, which leads into the next point, Gratitude, right? And that sense of gratitude that we all lack, which is rooted in, number one, not having a love for our faith. Like literally not having a love of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And secondly, because thinking that everything ought to be given to us on a silver platter. But, you know, like, let's talk about gratefulness. What do you think, in your opinion, right, that causes people to be ungrateful? Especially young people. It's just a lack of understanding. It, like ungratefulness, you, you, you gotta remember, everyone's born with fitra. Yeah. So, uh, un, un, ungratefulness is a particular appetite that has to be fed for a long mm -hmm. time for it to become the norm, right? So, if a person's raised in a way where they're given everything, so there's a thing. So, th so this is so. So, people who have struggle, they usually don't feel deserving because they had to work for what they have. People who don't have struggle and you know who parents have done well, take care of them well, you know you don't have to, you know you you, you kind of get you know the thing. You always have what you needed, and you also have been able to have some of what you want, right? Because you're never going to be able to fulfill all of what young people want, right? But you had always what you needed and some of what you want, right? Is that uh, you know the price of bread? Hey guys, hey Abdullah, how much is the price? Of, how much is the price of a loaf of bread? Yeah, that's the point, right? You eat bread, or how much is a pack of naan? Hey, of course, you and who said that? Which one of you guys said that? Of course, right? And mom, how many in the pack? Eight, seven, how many? Right? So, so he doesn't even know how many is in a pack, right? How much, wait, how much is nine calls? $2 at ShopRite, six fifty at Trader Joe's. Don't go to Trader I Joe's. I just made that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, he only learned that in college, trust me. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? So, the, the, so, so the, the point that I'm making is that if, if things aren't present in a person's life, Right? Is that they're not going to pay attention to it. Right? So this kid, he never had to fend for himself and, and say, you know what? I only have a little bit of money. He has 25 bucks and he saves nine. He spent six on the yogurt and 10 on dinner. Right? So he's never been to his last where he says, you know what? 
you know, I got two bucks, what am I going to eat? He, he's never went into a store and say, okay, I can afford this, I can afford this, I can afford this, I can afford this. Have you ever went in a store and looked at all the prices and see what you can afford? Yeah. Really? Yes. What store was that? Uh, and what'd you buy? Six bucks was the cheapest yogurt? <laughs> Whoa, dude. That's his Friday Abdullah, meal. Abdullah, we got to talk, bro. I don't know. We got to have a, like a side private conversation about business, bro. <laughs> Okay, okay, mashallah, you get $6 worth. All right, I'll, okay, he's killing my example. 10 minutes, okay, all right, bismillah. Uh, so the thing is that uh, if a person, uh, if a person has a dog out in front of his house, you know, when he goes to school every day, he's gonna bite him. Every day he comes to the house, he's gonna be aware of the dog. He's gonna go a different way, he's gonna do something different, he's gonna protect himself, he's gonna, he's gonna be ready for it. If a person walks out the house every day, there's never a dog, the day that the dog comes, this person's gonna be terrified. Likewise, the person who sees the dog every day, he's not as, you know, it's not as bad. And then the day when the dog doesn't come, he's like, hey, great, he's skipping down the street, you know? And he actually appreciates a dog not being there. He actually appreciates having a clear path. But this kid who has a clear path always, the day the dog comes, he's like, oh my goodness, I can't believe a dog came. Ah! And he's pulling his hair out and he's, right? He, he, didn't, he didn't have any struggle. So my thing is, is that I just think that um, uh, with gratitude, um, I think uh, if you, if you, if, 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 if for the parents, if you do do well and your kids don't have much struggle, you know, you got to make these guys take out the trash. You got to make these guys, you know, don't just say clean your room. You got to make it make sure it's spotless. You know, I don't care about it being their privacy space. It's your house. You can go in whenever you want. You got to knock on the door. You're not going to do any of that. You can go in. You can check stuff, open drawers, check, you know, you can, you can open stuff up and Pop and do whatever you want. You're allowed to do that. It's, you're allowed. It's your house and they're your kids, you know? So, um. There's one thing I want On the to flip say. side, though, yeah. is that have, uh, if you don't have this problem of struggle, you know, and, you know, make them do the grass, all of that stuff. Just, you know, hard work stuff to, you know, to build some character. But if you don't have this kind of struggle, then really, really, really have a thankfulness to Allah Ta'ala. Have a thankfulness to Allah Ta'ala. Because in reality, it's him who puts you in this position, good or bad. He made you tall or short, rich or poor, black or white, green or yellow, this or that, this or that, this or that, this or that. Allah Ta'ala built that for you. And he willed it for you, right, uh, with his perfect knowledge. So just be thankful to him. And uh, it's mentioned that he who doesn't thank the people is like he didn't thank Allah. SubhanAllah. So for any of you who don't thank your parents, it's like you're being dis uh, uh, ungrateful to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So the thing is, is that like I get it on like this big scholarly level and, you know, we can start quoting stuff and doing all this stuff. But in reality, you know, in real reality, if you don't think your mom and you don't think your dad, then you haven't thanked Allah, no matter how much you say Alhamdulillah. Yep. No matter how much you say Alhamdulillah. So the thing is that if for anyone who does something for you, even if someone, you know, Something very, very small. Have sugar to them and have sugar to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But especially those people who've been by your side, you know, for your entire lives. Inshallah. Yeah, and that goes back to something else, right? What Allah teaches us in the Quran is that if you are grateful, Allah will increase you. In shakartum la azidan nakum, right? But if you exercise in gratitude, which we do, like it's not like when, when young people as us, like we're 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 ungrateful. We don't do it once. We do it over and over again. But Allah is saying that if you consistently practice in gratitude, then God's punishment will affect you one way or another. And that doesn't mean a punishment in the hereafter. That could mean a punishment in this world, right? That could you be What's worse? What's there worse, you go. Dude? What's worse? Well, the after is worse. Now or punishment in the hereafter? Hereafter is worse. SubhanAllah. You know that anything good you do, you know anything uh, good you do that you get rewarded for, right? In this life or the next life. So you do something good, alhamdulillah, you know, uh, uh, you know, Allah will give you good in this life for that. And sometimes he'll, he'll, he'll hold, you know, and like in Nafsu, they say like, um, uh, that once or sometimes, like, uh, uh, like they're delayed, right? They're delayed, right? These blessings are delayed, right? They're, right? They're delayed, right? And the thing is that, so I don't know, maybe, like you want a GT or Maserati or like, what's that thing that's in style now? It's like Tesla. Tesla, Tesla. Yeah, yeah, dude, my boy. Everyone wants a Tesla, bro. It's like, it's like it's crazy, bro. You want a Tesla? Where's yeah, yourself? Right. So the thing is, like, dude, what's a Tesla compared to a reward in Jenna? Like, what's a Mercedes to Jenna? What's a BMW to Jenna? What's a mansion to Jenna? What's a million bucks to Jenna? Subhanallah. 
But on the flip side, you know, like anything bad you do, you deserve to be punished. And we say deserve because, alhamdulillah, the, uh, the most merciful one is that he can forgive whoever he wills. And we are praying that he's going to forgive uh, the believers for their sins. Amen. Amen. So, real quick. But the thing is that if you do a bad thing, you have to pay or you deserve to pay. And in reality, you can pay in this life or you can pay in the hereafter. And for someone who pays for a sin in this life, it comes like in the form of a tragedy or a calamity or something bad happens or this or that or this or that. And we always say, may Allah uh, 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 give you uh, expiation for your sins. That's what we say when something bad comes upon us, right? May Allah give you expiation for your sins, right? So whatever it was, bad car crash, bad, uh, 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 whatever it was that was the bad, bad thing in your life, think about it, dude. Like... What is that to the torment of the grave? What is it? What is that to the torment of the fire? Stubbing your toe, bad car crash, losing your money, house burning down, I don't care what the situation is. What is that compared to the torment in the grave and the torment of the fire? What is that? You can say it again. I live it. Nothing. Nothing. So with that thing, I just didn't want to go past that too quickly. So for all of you, you know, uh, take that very, very seriously. That if I do good, Allah Ta'ala, he making me good now. But Alhamdulillah, he, I, I know I'm going to get my good later. And if I do bad, SubhanAllah, no one may ever know. Nobody may ever know. Maybe I get away with it. Maybe I do that little bad thing to the side somewhere where no one can see me. But Allah can see you and he's going to call you to account. And maybe you never pay for that thing in this life. Maybe he doesn't call you to account in this life, but subhanAllah, what if he calls you to account in the next life? And I pray we're all protected from that. Amen. So I'm going to go ahead and ask you the last thing, and I'm actually going to combine it. Okay. So two things as well here. One thing which I think, um, you know, we talk about friendship a lot, right? And how good friends and bad friends affect us. Now specifically to that, we got actually a question saying, that a lot of young people use the N-word a lot in the community, right? The N-word. They say nigga? Yeah. That word? Yep. On Allah. Right? And that they don't feel comfortable that they should be using that. So should they be using that, number one? And number two, how do you go about figuring out whether your friends are good for you or bad for you? And that's so, going to be the last one for tonight, and then after that so we'll two, pray. So, so two things, right? First is that, you know, just because you use the word nigga doesn't make you a bad person. So I'm not going to do that to you, right? I'm not going to crucify you because you use the word nigga, right? So I'm a, I'm a black guy, right? So I'm going to bust the, the N-word down. All right. So earlier, you got a question? Oh, I love that book. Dude, yeah, bro. Are you in ninth grade? Because I read in ninth grade. Oh, uh, you got a better school than I did. <laughs> Your reading program's on point, bro. To Kellen Mockingbird is a good book. If you guys want to, you know, learn some about the racism in, uh, 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 in America uh, in the past decades, uh, that's a, it's a fiction book, but it's a very, very, very good depiction of what a lot of our, uh, our elders had went through uh, uh, in those 60s, 70s, 40s, and 30s uh, in America. Alhamdulillah. So, okay. So, who's your favorite character? Who? Jim. Which one was Jim? Um, okay. And who's Atticus? That's the lawyer? Oh, yeah, that's yeah. He's my favorite character. And Tom was, uh, uh, what's his last name? Huh? Sawyer? No, Tom, Tom Sawyer was Sawyer, great, man. bro. <laughs> Yo, Tom Sawyer was great, bro. You guys read Tom Sawyer still? And Huckleberry Finn and like, yeah, 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 yeah. You're taking me back, bro. That was like the first set of books my mom bought me. Tom Sawyer. The same it was like Goosebumps. No, Tom Sawyer is not To Kill a Mockingbird, no, I mean, dude. Like, didn't you, in my school, we read both books in the same year. Oh, uh, no, no, like, To Kill a Mockingbird, I got in school. But, like, Tom Sawyer, Huckleberry Finn, my mom gave me that at home. Uh, so I got them, like, different, uh, you know, different times. Okay, all right, all right. So, 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 so the N-word, right? So if you're using the word uh, nigga um, in an academic setting, um, to me, uh, I, I, I don't find anything wrong with using the word nigga in an academic setting, 
Absolutely, I do not. What's an academic setting? Can you describe that? Uh, the setting that we're in, okay. uh, on universities and classrooms and dinner table conversations when you're talking to your parents and this and that and this and that and you're talking about the, because the thing is is that who this word is meant to offend, largely we're not offended by it. The word itself. We're offended by how you use it. Right? So we grew up where we say, what's up my nigga? I'm dead serious. I don't do it. I don't talk. I don't like anymore. But for many, many years, be like, yo, I said, I want to my nigga like that. Right. <laughs> I know that sounds like mad crazy and parents are probably gonna go crazy with that. But I got to be real honest with you. Like, again, again, I'm from like, you know, black, low class, uh, 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 really, really rough neighborhoods. Right. And alhamdulillah, we had the dean. So for us, I said, I'm alaikum, my nigga, just wasn't that bad. Right. And, but for you, so here's the thing about being Americans, right? So for me, I grew up hearing this word all the time. Something funny happened, they say, ha ha, nigga, you funny. Like that, right? So I'm, I'm dead serious. I'm just giving you like real, because I think we spend too much time, I do this stuff a lot. And I'm, I made a vow to myself when I came back home to Reem that I wouldn't, I wouldn't be fake at all ever again. That I would be real wherever I am and keep it real wherever I am, right? So I'm trying to be real with you, right? So where we grew up, like, no, the word nigga is just used all the time. Like, not in a bad way, right? Someone, like, scores a touchdown or something like that or gets, like, a good grade. Like, yo, that's my nigga. Like that, you know? It's like straight up term of endearment for us, right? Straight up term of endearment for us, right? And the problem that I have, though, is that this is not the case for you. This is not the case for you. You didn't grow up saying nigga. You didn't. You or your cousins, you know, you didn't say nigga till you start listening to rap music. You didn't. I know for a fact you didn't say nigga until you started listening to rap music. It's just, it's, it, it's just what it is. And I got to tell you, I rap for a long, 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 long time. There are some parts of hip hop that I absolutely hate. There are some parts of hip hop that is absolutely degrading to who we really are. There are some parts of the hip hop culture that is completely misrepresentative of who we are. So we don't accept Jay-Z. You can have Jay-Z, we don't want him. You can have Puff Daddy, you can have um, the new guys. What's his name with the, all the hair? 6'9", you can have him, you can have, you can have him, because we don't want him. You can have him, and whoever, excuse me? Kanye. 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 Man, Kanye's breaking my heart, bro. This guy, you guys, you guys definitely can have Kanye. <laughs> the black delegation is giving him away, okay? Right? I just, I just want to throw that out there. Make New Jersey great again. Right? <laughs> Dude, bro, we used to love Kanye, bro. Like, man, college dropout Kanye. Yo, old Kanye, bro, I was 13, and I was like, yo, this is like, okay, he's talking about, like, you know, empowering our people. He's talking about, like, getting your own money, being independent, you know. He's talking about getting education, and he's also talking about, hey, don't let Americans play you. Even if you don't get an education, you can still live a great life here if you work hard, right? So it was like, yeah, Kanye. You know, but the whole hugging Trump thing and all that, bro, I'm just not, I just don't know, bro. I'm just like, and if I ever met Donald Trump, I, I, I would, I would I sincerely, I would, I would invite him to Islam. Sit him down, yo, Donald, hey, listen, check it out, right? You know, listen, that's no God but Allah, Donnie, you know, and Muhammad's a messenger. And I'm telling you, you can be a much more effective human being than you, because I've been thinking about how would I give Donald Trump the dollar, you know? And I'm going off a little bit, I know, but I've been thinking, like, how do you give Donald Trump the dollar, you know? I'm trying to give him the dollar, you know? And I've been thinking, just let him know, right? It's like, yo, dude, if you become a Muslim, bro, you're going to have a crazy effect. He would. If Donald Trump became Muslim, it would probably be like Abdul Shiyan coming Muslim, Muslim. Islam, Muslim. great, wonderful, like, wonderful yeah, thing. Yeah, right? Like, it'd be like, yo, yo, you know? You know, like, it'd be nice, you know? Donald Trump becomes like, dude, we will crush racism, like, gosh, you know, but, but alhamdulillah. So, 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 the thing, so the point I'm making is this, right? Is that, is that for you guys, using the word nigga, you're just using profanity. You're just using profanity. You guys are just using profanity. So what I mean when I say don't let that word American, because like I told you guys, the part, the thread that we have between all of us is these American pastimes. One of the main American pastimes is music. 
I'm telling you, it's music. And in the music, they say nigga, and that ain't the worst of it. That's what didn't get bleeped out. And so our kids, this becomes that thicker. This becomes that thicker. This becomes that remembrance. Nigga, 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 Here's the thing, here's the thing. They're so not used to it that they're intrigued by it. They're intrigued by it. They're like liberated by this stuff. And for guys like us, guys like us, is when Islam became most important to us, it was those parts of our culture that we left. I love being a black man. I gotta be real with you, bro. I love, I love my culture, I love our music, I love, like, dude, our food, even if it's unhealthy, whatever, right? Like, like bro, I love being a black guy. No, you're not gonna find anything for me with that, right? I don't care who he's against us, I don't care. I love being a black guy, right? But we don't allow our children to say nigga. We say it, I don't even say it that much anymore now that I have sense. But in a time of confusion, we just say it. So those black youth that you hear say it, they're saying it out of habit. But why would you follow them in wrong? Why would you follow them in disobedience? And that's the problem I have with friendship. That's the problem that I have. You never say nigga before. You never say nigga before. You get to the high, well we say like the high, the high school, we say the high, right? You get to the high school, right? You meet this guy from across town, you guys say one thing, you get the DM thing, and you listen to music with each other or whatever you guys do, or FaceTime, whatever, blah, 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 blah. now you're talking how he talks. You don't talk this way, your cousins don't talk this way, your father doesn't talk this way, your mother doesn't talk this way, none of your uncles, none of your family, nobody you know, no one in your community like we spoke about. None of those people you pray with every Friday, none of that. And you meet this guy, and I'm not saying anything bad about him because maybe he comes from a place where they say nigga all the time. So he doesn't think he's doing anything bad. He's just being himself. But and then you follow him in the wrong thing thinking it's hashtag cool. It's not. So in this identity crisis that I'm talking about, you see it mostly when we pick our groups of friends. You're going to run with this crowd because you know I want to be down with this, I want to be down with that. Right? So guys that rap, I hang with a group of rappers. Guys that get in trouble, they hang with a group of people that get in trouble. Guys that, you know, buy yogurts for six bucks, I guarantee you he has a friend who loves those yogurts as well. Do you have a friend who likes those same yogurts? Yeah. Yeah, mashallah. <laughs> right? Like that's just, hey, birds of a feather flock together. That's how it goes. That's how it goes. And one thing that we learn from our teachers is that this idea of companionship is absolutely everything in Deen al-Islam. Yeah. Companionship is absolutely everything in Deen al-Islam. Every, man, everything. Companionship. You are known by the men and the women that you walk next to. You are known by the men and the women that you vouch for. You are known by the men and the women that vouch for you. Like when you get a job, you gotta get a reference. And you get the reference, and you say, I know him so long, they wanna call him and say, Yeah, he's a great guy. You know, I've known him for this amount of time. Da, da, da. Then you get the job. But if you don't know the guy that's on the, and you guys know about references, right? Like, hey, I know this kid. I know that, right? But hey, we messed that up. What do we have? What do we have? So hey, for the girls, right, right? And I'm not gonna point too much to the sisters, but I just wanna make a point here, right? Because all the young girls are not all losing their modesty. It's not happening like that. They're not all just one day popping up saying, I want to wear a bunch of makeup. You know, I, I never want to wear a hijab. I want to be liberal like a white American woman. They don't just pop up like that, right? But what happens is, is that one of them, they'll go too far. So maybe her name was Fatima, maybe we call her Fat now. Maybe she doesn't, you know, like, we get to the night school, we're meeting, like, Rebecca and Rachel and all this kind of stuff. And, and then, you know, Rebecca and, hey, Rach. And then, you know, they, they start to talk and this and that. And then she says, you know what, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to be like the woman, you know, of my culture. You know, I just want to, you know, get the press thing with my hair and make it straight and do the, the whole thing that they do, you know. Like, so the point that I'm making is, is that, you know, for the young women, it's, it's not all of them. But when we let one go, subhanAllah, she's bringing some of them with her. She's bringing some of them with her. 
She's going to, why? Because what do the girls do? They come to the house, hey mom, hey dad, shh. Then they run upstairs to the room. That's just what they do. That's just how it is. Like, that's just what they do, right? And they run upstairs to the room. And they close the door and they talk, 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 talk. And they share with each other how they're living, what they're doing, and they're influencing each other. Companionship. Same thing for adults. There's no difference with us. Same thing with elders. We influence each other. We influence each other. You got some people who always help you do good. You got some you got to stay away from. They're going to help you do bad. You guys have to make good decisions in the company that you keep. It's too important. It's too important. So my thing is, anyone who's trying too hard not to be himself, that's an indication that you may want to stay away from this person. And I don't mean stay away from him in a standpoint where you can guide him. I mean stay away from him in a way so he doesn't guide you in the wrong way. And strengthen your ties of friendship with goodness. So when you guys chill out together and you're hanging out and you're Netflixing and chilling, right? <laughs> ah, 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 right? So when you guys are Netflixing and chilling, right? When this happens, so plan of love, make sure the prophet is mentioned. At least once. So okay, you're gonna watch that crazy show. I don't know what the show is, but you guys are watching some crazy shows, bro. You really are, you need to be careful with that, right? But at least one time, make sure the prophet is mentioned. At least one time, mention someone of the Sahaba. And if this guy's your friend, just make him do the border. Straight up, like, yeah, just hit us on the commercial break, just mute it and go board them. You know? Like, just something, 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 something. I don't care if it's, you know, hey, we're gonna get together, we're gonna feed the poor together, we're gonna get together. Or, or you know what? Check this out, right? So, the thing is this is that even if when you come together as friends, you decide to just not do any bad, start there. Start there. It doesn't make you corny. It doesn't make you not cool. It doesn't make, it, 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 it's going to make you successful. That's what it's going to make you. It doesn't mean you can't have fun. It doesn't mean you can't be young. It doesn't mean you can't be wild. It doesn't mean you can't do all that stuff that you want to do. But how about you guys start right now with the group of friends you have, right? And make a commitment to one another that we will not do any bad together. Start there. Start there. Whoever your friends, make the commitment with them, we won't do any bad together. Start there. And inshallah, Allah will increase us in good. I mean. I mean, JazakAllah khair. Do we, give, do we give them any time to answer questions, ask questions? The we did. They, they, they sent it to, uh, to the, to, we had a text thing. Does oh, anybody want, oh, well. That's the, nice. How about. Any, any young people, any young people have any questions? This is before we close. I know we got to go. And I know it's time for Isha and, um, and everything. But I just, sometimes I get scared of not hearing from the young people. Because for me, I'm going to go sit in front of another group of young people, and I really, really would like to hear some of what they have to say, inshallah. So for the young people... I saw there, a hand somewhere is here. Is there anyone who has a question or a statement? I don't care. Question or statement. doesn't matter. Actually, hold on. Adib, I think you had your hand up, right? Yeah. Any question. I don't yeah. care. Even about Kanye West. Just hey, don't ask sisters, if like, you can eat McDonald's one of or sisters, something. One of you guys got to ask a question, too. So we're not going to let you off the hook here, inshallah. Okay. So let's do... All right, go ahead. All right, so it's going to be a bit of a big question. So... <laughs> Ask me a big question. Make it smaller. It's too big already. Inshallah. So, so some things like. Um, Dude, that's huge. That's four words. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, you have three okay. words left. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Why is fornication and adultery haram? Is there a certain reasons for it? Because Allah Ta'ala said it was. This is it. This is it. Hey, listen, check it out. Okay, rules of religion, right? We'll just do like a quick, like, why is this haram for dummies, right? Not, uh, you, wait. I don't know how that came off just now. You are not a dummy. I mean, I'm the dummy. And this is how I had to understand it, right? So, the Muslims, we don't do what we're told not to do, and we do what we're told to do because of the one that it came from. So, sometimes people say, oh, that sin's not that bad. I just did X, Y, and Z. It was only... So you know how like parents, you know how like when the kid, when you like, when you go to them, right, and you're admonishing them, they say, it was only, I only, I just did, right, like that, right? So the thing is this is that, okay, maybe what you did was a small thing. Maybe what you did was a small thing, but it was great in relation to the one that you did it to, the one who you disobeyed. So fornication and adultery, no, anything, like not eating pork or not eating like, you know, haram meat. No, we just, because Allah said so. That's why. And the thing is, for anyone who, uh, uh, if that's not enough for you because Allah said so, you need to check yourself. 
Insha'Allah. For anyone who needs so much evidences and so much proof, why is this haram? Why is this halal? And for any of those people who question what's haram and who question what's halal, and any of those people trying to push that envelope of halal and haram, I got to tell you, you're hurting us and get out of our way. Insha'Allah. So fornication and adultery, but they're two different things, you know, right? So fornication is between two individuals who are not married, right? So fornication is for the one who's not married. Right. And the uh, had punishment. So in Islam, so Islam uh, is meant to, we don't live like this today, but it's meant to be a society as a whole government called these. So when we hear the Sharia, right, when we say like, you know, the Islamic law, that's a whole legal system like the American legal system. And there are cases, they're tried, they're fought, they're won like in court like we have, right? So in fornication, if a person was found like to be convicted of fornication, right, is that he would have to do a year in exile and get 100 lashes. SubhanAllah. So young people aren't married, and if they make a mistake, it would be considered fornication if you're not married, right? Allah Ta'ala could forgive you, he cannot give you the punishment now, he could give you the punishment later. That's up to him, that's not on our side. But what you deserve to be punished with is a year in exile and 100 lashes. That's what you deserve. And most people die before the 100th lash. Most people don't last 100 lashes, period. It's just, like you think of that. So, so this is the deal with fornication. So my thing is, hey, you think, you think, you know, you're feeling in the moment, your body's feeling a certain kind of way, you think, you know what, it's not going to be that bad, and this and that, and this and that. Yo, 100 lashes in a year in exile. We just spoke about how if you don't get punished in this life, you deserve to be punished in the next life. Dude, who wants to get the equivalent of 100 lashes in a year in exile to get that in the torment of the grave or the torment of the fire? for a feeling that lasts 10 seconds. It doesn't last that long. It's really quick. Even if, even if it's long, it's really, really quick. And it, it, it's, it's gonna take this much time of your life, really, really quick, and you're gonna put yourself in a position to harm yourself for the rest of your lives. This is problematic. And with young people, we don't give them any room. Say, oh, you're in America. You know, I know there's a lot of things being thrown at you guys, a lot of things going on, a lot of, guard yourselves. If you feel like you're, you're, you're in fear of fornication, then stay away from the young women. Simple. Absolutely simple. Stay away. Young women, if you feel like you're going to, you know, fall into fornication, stay away from young men. It's simple. You guys don't have to mingle with each other. You guys do not have to be friends. Girls and guys don't have to be friends. Period. Even if you're from the same community. So when we're out, of course, the guys from the community, we're going to look out for the sisters of the community. This is from our community. We've got to make sure they're okay, this and that and all that. But dude, we don't have to exchange numbers, bro. Honestly, we should never be texting each other. We should never be DMing each other. We should never be Snapchatting each other. All those things that we actually do, that even make for, because to get to the level of fornication, you have to go through so many levels. Fall back, yo. Seriously. Fall back and watch yourself and guard yourselves. Because some of these things you can do without your parents knowing. And look at that. You took advantage of what they didn't know and ruined yourselves. And ruined yourselves. But on the flip side, adultery is a little bit of a deeper thing. So fornication is one thing, but adultery is when you're married, right? You're a married person, right? And you have a, relation, a sexual relationship with someone else who you're not married to, right? SubhanAllah. May Allah protect everyone from that. Amin. And in America, this thing is prevalent. It's prevalent. They, they, in America, they'll say, you know, don't do polygamy, but then they'll, they'll applaud you for having five girlfriends. <laughs> Just sin, 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 sin. But the punishment for adultery is that you deserve to be stoned to death. The one who is married, and they have sex with someone who's not married, they deserve to be stoned to death. And even if Allah Ta'ala doesn't have you stoned to death in this life, I mean, what would be the equivalent to that in the, in, 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 in the grave or in, or, 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 or in those levels of hellfire? What would it be? Is it really worth it? But we were supposed to be talking about keeping it real. Like I said, like I said, keeping it real is to have your ro over dominate your nafs. And truly, this question that you're having here is something that all the young people are going through. Everybody, even the older people are going through. Everyone's going through it. Once you get to a certain point in life, you just go through a problem like that. Everyone's going through it. You need to talk to your father. 
Not just you in general. He's, he, he, his eyes got big with that one. Yeah, yeah, dude, your father knew. how you got here. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry about it. He's the man to ask. Trust me, you know. He knows what's going on. But he also knows you. And he knows how to give you the advice that you need. Inshallah. So for all of you young people, don't be afraid to go to your parents about sex. You live in America where sex is pushed on young people big time. And the music and the movies all the images and everything that they go through. So if your kids don't come to you about it, I'm asking the parents to please go to your kids about it. Please, got to have the hard talk and you got to go to these guys to find out where they are. Because some of our sons and some of our daughters, they need to be married a little bit sooner. And some of them need to absolutely wait and, you know, for you know, a long time to get married. So inshallah, a part of that wisdom and energy and exchange and all of that, make that a, a, a topic that you guys discuss. And maybe without cameras, uh, so that way you guys can be completely real with each other, inshallah. You guys got to get serious a little bit. Because Allah Ta'ala, he can take your life at any time. There's no, there's no age to death, bro, little sis. There's no age to it, you know? There's no age to it. You know, no one knows when they're going to die. Everyone knows that, you know, they're going to meet that moment of yakin. Everyone knows that every soul shall taste death. We say it all the time. And the kids, you know, memorizing Quran and all that. We, you know, all of that kind of stuff. We talk about that. But the thing is that, you know, all right, we've been asking each other questions. It's like, yo, who knows when they're going to die? But who knows they are going to die? That's a question for everyone. Do you know you're going to die? Now keep your hand raised if you know when you're going to die. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So, you know, you young guys, especially you young guys, drive and be careful. Especially when you're, when you're with your friends. Listen, dude, your parents giving you the keys. They're trusting you, bro. Sis, they're trusting you, man. They're really, really trusting you big time when they give you those keys, bro. They're expecting you not to drink. Not to be smoking. They're expecting you guys not to be even playing music too loud while you're actually driving. You sit in the parking lot, you turn it up, you crank it up, whatever, right? But they're expecting you to pay attention. They're expecting you not to text and drive. They're expecting you not to answer the phone while you're... That's what they're expecting. That's what they're expecting, bro. That's what they're expecting. Please don't let them down. Because I got to tell you, you know, I got to tell you, you know, it, it's really, really painful to see a parent bury their own child. And so all these questions about, you know, <clears throat> you know, should I listen to my parents and should, you know, and all of this and all of that and all of this and all of that. Come on, dude. Come on, dude. The fact that you still have parents and parents, the fact that you still have children, we should all say alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. Because there, there are some Muslims among you who have lost their parents. And there are some Muslims amongst you who have lost their children. Please, I'm begging you all, don't get tired of each other. Please don't get fed up with each other have understanding with each other, and find that silver lining of mercy with each other. Please, I'm begging you, it's too important. And young people, please become more trustworthy. Become trustworthy. If you are trustworthy, the elders will trust you. If you actually do what you said you're gonna do, they're gonna trust your word. If you actually don't lie, they're going to know you're telling the truth. If you go where you said you were going to go, if you answer the phone, you say you answer the phone. If you return home when you say you're going to return home and stop pushing the envelope so much, you'll have their love and their respect, and that's going to give our family honor. So, alhamdulillah, no, we got to get back uh, to our families and our loved ones. Um, but subhanAllah, this has been, mashallah, uh, a great evening. Uh, a great, 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 great evening, mashallah. May Allah Ta'ala reward all of you, all parents and children. I mean, Jazakallah khair. Can we get a takbir for Brother uh, Ibn Ali? Takbir. Allahu Akbar. Takbir. Allahu Akbar. Jazakallah khair. And one, one second. I know we got to pray, but one of the sisters, they have to ask a question. I don't care, bro. I don't care. I don't care if they say, what color is the sun or something. I can just all right, Hannah, go ahead. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you guys got to get in the conversation because. Okay, where are you? Where are you at? MashaAllah. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you so, so much for coming into our community. Thank you for having me, MashaAllah. Are you a mom? I am. Can you do me a favor? Make dua for my mom. Please, inshallah. All the moms, please make dua for Ibn Ali's mom, please. Okay, inshallah. Okay. I actually wanted to talk about you. I wanted you to tell us about your mom. Oh, man. My mom's crazy. Yo. 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 Man. 
Man, my mom, man. <laughs> Inshallah, we'll, we'll put Isha at 11 p.m. Okay, okay. Hey, listen, this is 11. I would be laughing. With the hajjud. I would be like, Alright, he has a point. It's and point. the witter dua. Stop! <laughs> and suhoor. Hey, yeah, this guy is great. This guy is funny. So, Alright, so, we'll, so we're, so we're going to stop soon, inshallah. Because he has a point, right? Um, but my mom, the greatest thing, uh, to answer it generally, the greatest thing that my mother has done for us, so, Umi never gave up on us. She never gave up on us. She, I'm t she absolutely never, ever gave up on us. She just didn't give up on us. And we, and we uh, man, we were pretty crazy. You know, like black American youth, we went through all the black American youth stuff. All the stuff you see on TV, all the, all the stuff. We went through all the stuff, you know? And subhanAllah, she never, she, never, she never gave up on us. But my mom, she, wasn't a, she was a very firm woman. So my mom, you know, she didn't care if I didn't like her rules or not. She just, you know, she was, she was stern. And it's funny because she was able to give us love and kick it and talk to us and all of that at certain times. But sometimes she was just like, man, she was crazy. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know how to tell you to be crazy. But dude, when my mom goes like, she start calling you by your full name and all that kind of stuff. That's like a thing black moms do. They call you by your full name. You're like, oh man, you know, like that. But my mom though, she um, uh, she didn't remarry, so she didn't. Uh, we 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 were raised in a house with just my mom. That she didn't get married until we until you know. I got married one year, then my mom got married the year after that. So she never. So I think that played a big role, and we kind of had it to ourselves uh, as well. Um, where in the black community, a lot of the women, uh, dads leave, and then women will be with another man, and then that messes up the family dynamics. So my mom never did that to us. But more than anything, is that she would always encourage us, and she would always, you know, make sure that we were proud about who we were. So we never hid being poor. Because hey, this is what Allah wants for us. This is what it is, right? You know, she taught us that you know being, you know, struggling is a part of being Muslims. You know, the, 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 the greatest thing, you know, in the, in the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu is all the struggle that he went through, you know, and that if you want honor, that God will put you through struggle, you know. So when I would complain or be doing some, like, haram thing, like, I want, you know, I'm trying to make some money, mom, you know, because I got to buy those, those jeans. Or at that time, it was just a Nokia phone. It wasn't even an iPhone. Yeah, it was just like, a, you know, a Nokia phone, you know. And she would say, you know, like, we have to struggle. We're Muslims. You know, you said you believe, you know, we prayed this morning. If you say you believe, you're going to get up and pray with me, you know. Then, you know, how can I, because we were big at the time, you know. She's saying, how can I follow you in prayer? You don't even want to struggle. How weak are you? How weak are you? How are you going to be a man? You don't even want to struggle, you know. So um, uh, she cooked for us, amazingly, you know. I'm pretty sure all you guys got that part covered. And after that is that my mom, she never lied to us. She never even sugarcoated things. It is what it is. So, so we didn't have the kind of mom that's like, yo, close your eyes. Nah, my mom's not like that. Hey, you seen it? I seen it. Hey, son, let, let's talk about what we've seen. You know, so I, want, I just want to make sure. As a matter of fact, hey, son, you tell me what you've seen. So we, so, so, we, so we always say, like, this word interrogation, that's why I was laughing. My brothers and I, we have a word, right? We, we, we joke with each other. He'll text me and say, hey, mom called. Did you get interrogated? <laughs> and we just laugh because, yeah, I got interrogated. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, you're going to. So um, the thing with my mom, she was like all up in my stuff. She was like always in my stuff, like, Ugh. but you know, it helped us big time, inshallah. Sorry, and I know you don't have time to answer this, but I would love it if you could answer and put a pin in it. Um, what is the video up about it or anything? No, we're going to answer it now. We're staying here until Fudger, so it's fine. We're not even going to, he put it together. We're going to. He's gonna to go to your father. It's like not even. It's just not even like yeah, yeah, yeah. This is it. like Dino Islam, like straight up, like yo, bro. I've been through all this stuff, like like firsthand. Like I've been through all this stuff, right? And you know, the, you know, for a young woman, the first time a guy does like those eye things to her, or you know, he does like that, and he smiles at her, you know, when she walks past, or whatever, you know, like you guys, like you guys know, what's, you guys, the elder men, you guys know what's going on too, right? Like. So the first time, you know, that a young Suddenly woman, all the guys are looking down. SubhanAllah, right? 
Yeah, you should keep you should you should keep your gaze lowered, but whatever, right? So the thing is, is that uh, for young women, so so men and women are different. So men, uh, like in marriages, men need to feel the need of being respected. In a marriage, a man has to have that. You know, if he if he loses feeling being respected, you've taken everything from him. You know, you've you've taken everything from the husband who doesn't feel respected. You know, but women want to feel wanted. You know, so for a woman who doesn't feel wanted, you've taken everything from her. You know, if she, because her, her being wanted and her being longed for is why she goes through all those struggles in raising families with children and husbands. Because husbands, we're like, we're like your kid sometimes. And I mean, we pay for everything, but like the, just whatever, right? So, so, the, so the point I'm making, but because she feels wanted and because she feels longed for, all these things are bearable to her because my husband, he wants me. He loves me. Right? He, you know, he's all about me. You know, I'm his number one. I'm his comfort place, you know? But if she loses that, you're going to have a hard time. You're going to have absolutely a hard time. So the thing with young women is that they haven't been married for years. They don't have experience with men. So when, when, you know, when a young guy shows them attention, it's like fireworks, dude. It's like, oh my goodness. And then her heart does something and she goes, <gasps> and you know, and then she tells her friends, you know, he looked at me and all this, you know, that kind of stuff. And the thing with the difference between men and women is that for the young women, we have to have these talks much sooner. Much, 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 much sooner. Much, 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 much sooner. You know, because, you know, the girls, uh, they, are, they, are, they are ahead of us big time. Big time. The girls are ahead of us big time. So if, even like in marriage, so you might get a young woman, you know, wants to get married. She's at the age of getting married, whatever. You know, she wants to get married. And the guy she wants to get married to, he's young too, right? And you see this like a lot in the community. She's ready to go. She's like, she is like, yo, I'm, not, I'm trying to be this man's wife, you know? And he's like, oh, man. You know, his palms are sweating, his underarms are sweating, whatever he thinks about it. He's just not ready. He's just not ready. Because it just takes young men a little longer to develop than it takes young women to develop. So women, they hit this uh, uh, womanhood much sooner than men hit manhood. You know, so the thing is that I think, um, first and foremost, is that we have to start putting some separation between the girls and the boys. And I think earlier the better, right? We have to, I, I know we're in America now, but it was never like this in any country that any of us came from. Period. I don't care where you came from. It wasn't like this, you know, and even if it's like this now in your country, it wasn't like that before. Right. So I think one that's spending just too much time with each other and it's women and men. If you're going to spend time with each other, of course, we're going to admire each other. Like what woman doesn't, you know, want men and what man doesn't want women, you know, and I don't want to make young people feel bad because they long for each other. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. It's something wrong when you get deceitful, you know, and you get sneaky and you start stealing people's honor. Right. So for the young woman, if he's only going to talk to you in the DM, he is not serious about you. Yeah. Check beer. Allah, the guys are going to check beer for that. But whatever. Right. I'm putting you on the spot. Right. If, he, if he's only going to talk to you in a Facebook messenger, he's not sincere about you. Check beer. If, he, if, he's, if he's texting you some crazy hour of the night because he knows everyone's sleeping and you, and, you, and you can talk now. Right. Then this is not the guy for you. Straight up and down, bro. And I want to tell you guys this, right? Is that the sister responding to you, she's probably not the girl for you either. She's probably not the one for you. The girl who sneaks around and she, you know, she knows her mom and her dad, they're in the other room, they don't approve of this, but she's like, she's texting it all up. Maybe she's not the one for you either. So I'm not going to put it all on the guys, mom. I'm not going to say, you know, these young men are like wolves, but they are, you know. But some of, some of, some of our young women are like wolves as well. And the thing is, I think there has to be a level of, one, understanding these young youth who grew up in America, right? And then I think there has to be some type of level of uh, uh, admonishing them for spending too much time with each other. Because if they spend too much time with each other, a mistake will happen. And I'm not saying the great mistake, like fornication or adultery. I'm not saying that, but some mistake. Because the thing is, okay, that's the, on the great side. That's the, that's the big thing on the great side. But what about haram touching? What about holding hands? What about a first kiss? What about all these different things that happen in America? They're on the sitcoms. They're in the American movies. They're in the, it, that's like the American thing. You know, I met a girl. We had our first kiss and all that. Oh, that's haram. Straight up, that's haram. That comes with a punishment in the Islamic law. Even to hold the hands of a woman you're not married to, that comes with a punishment in the Islamic law. So it's like, don't feel so crazy about being in America with your kids. 
No, you're, you're, you're in America, but we still have the same religion. We still have the same Allah. We still have the same Rasulullah And his message is clear for his time and for all of our times. So, so understanding first with the young girls and understanding that the young girls are moving much, much faster than the young boys. Like these girls, you guys need to have like, when you guys have like the girl events, you guys need to get the young women together and you need to say like, what's going on with you, right?